Welcome to another exhilarating episode of Comic Book Straight Talk. Brought to you from the secret basement inside one of America's oldest comic shops, Tulsa's own The Comic Empire. Now, true believers, open up your ear holes and get ready to have your head filled with the best comic book knowledge this galaxy can handle. That's right. It's time for another nerd overload with Comic Book Straight Talk. Welcome to Comic Book Straight Talk. This is Terry the French Tickler French. Just Kenny. Captain Dalian. And we have a special guest here today. What is your name, sir? Actually, I've got a perfect nickname for you. We have Jazzy. James Davis. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> we have Jazzy James Davis. Excellent. Well, James went to the uh, Dallas Con. What was, uh, what was the name of the con? The Dallas Fan Expo. And just want to talk a little bit about it. So what were your thoughts of, of the con? I enjoyed it. It. Uh, I've, I went the first year. It went over to the Canadian uh, ownership, and I wasn't that impressed, but I liked it this year. Had lots of good guests, tons of vendors. Um, a little more organized this time around? Yeah, it seemed to be a lot more organized. Uh, they had enough uh, they had enough helpers and volunteers, and not only that, but they knew what was going on. No, no the Which, first time, it was no one knew anything and you couldn't find anything and no one knew any times and yeah this one i mean every every time that i'd have a a question and i found someone standing by they they knew the answer to it uh, i was looking for uh i'm not going to pronounce the name right but oliver Cop copier the uh french artist that draws uh uh thor um and I, I couldn't find him and found one of the volunteers. And they're like, oh, he was supposed to be right here, but he had to cancel for a family emergency. And so. Yeah, I, I, I didn't go this year. Normally, uh, the con has kind of let me, that particular con there has let me down. And uh, usually didn't have many vendors there, but uh, apparently they had a lot of vendors this time around. Oh, it was. it. There was lots of comic vendors. There was. Um, it, Again, there was lots of Funko Pops and other things too, but there was no shortage of uh, comic vendors, both uh, uh, current stuff, and then had a few vendors with. Uh, um, I didn't really see any Golden Age, but there was some Silver and Bronze Age there, and a lot of hot books of the moment. Yeah, but not just that. Yeah. Now, is this was this supposed to be the last time? One of the last times, I guess, that Stan Lee is supposed to be making an appearance to sign. I, I, this may be his last Texas appearance. Last Texas. Okay. If I, I don't know. It I, changes daily. I know it's Burt Ward and Adam West's last. Yeah, it's Texas their appearance. farewell tour. Yeah, yeah. Their, their last appearance too. Their final, final, yeah. final, final farewell tour. The beginning of the end, yeah. or the end of the beginning. So I, kn I know you went there to get some signatures, so who all did you stand in line to get signatures for? Uh, the main person I went for was Art Adams. I hadn't been able to meet him before, so I took a bunch of uh, books to get signed by him. He was very nice. Um, he had his uh, three- or four-year-old daughter there with him, and they... Uh, I guess they'd brought all their stuff in a suitcase and they had emptied the suitcase out and she was snoozing inside the suitcase <laughs> behind their thing because she was bored out of her mind. <laughs> and uh, But he was he was very nice and personable and I uh, got a bunch of stuff signed by him. Uh, and then I also wanted to go for Brian Stelfreeze. Um, and he was talking to another artist but I I took my books up to his uh, handler and she gave it to him and it was the uh, it was a book called Psy Cops and it was the first thing he ever drew and he he stopped what he was doing and and he was he was like geek that somebody knew that and that I had some nice copies of it and so uh, and then uh, I got some uh, signatures from 
uh, Scott Snyder. And, and most and people you went and saw weren't really charging you. you like uh, Art Adams was free, you said, and I believe. Yeah, yeah. Art Scott's Adams was uh, basically as many books as you wanted for free. Um, I don't think. I didn't see any list of a maximum number for Stelfreeze. Um, Scott Snyder would only do three books for free, and then he charged after that. And then I heard that as his time became more limited, that dropped to just one book mm -hmm. sign. So, but I uh, the longest I waited uh, was for Snyder, and that was. Um, he was signing at 10.30 Saturday. They opened up the gates a little early at 9.45. I went straight to get in his line and was like 8th from where they capped the line off. And I it was 11.30, 11.40 before I got my stuff signed. Wow. And, uh, and as soon as they were done, he was hustling off to a panel, so... He also got the autograph from the sexiest woman on the face of the planet, yes, Charisma the, Carpenter. Yes, she was lovely. Sweet. Um, I know that Tim Curry and Meatloaf was there and several other people. Yeah, it was quite a few people from... Uh, How was that line? I know you didn't stand in line for that, but I was just wondering. I, I didn't see their lines. They, they were kind of off in a another separate little area that the the show floor was um it was about half vendors with artists kind of in a u-shape around the end of that and then the other half was uh uh signatures and celebrities and they were kind of um separated into various areas they had all the internet uh cosplayers and and they were in an area and then a lot of the tv stars and then they had the uh uh the rocky horror people off off to the side and uh and then mark hamill i uh, talked to one guy that Spent five hundred bucks a piece for him and his wife to have the Mark Hamill experience. And wow, that, that must be an experience. Five hundred dollars. Yeah, the guy asked him to do his line from from the Force Awakens, and he he uh, he stood up in front of everybody and put his hand out and and then sat back down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you said everything was pretty organized. Adal and me were discussing it earlier and he said that there were some people online saying that was disorganized, but you're saying that wasn't your experience? It, it wasn't my experience. Um, I talked to... Uh, the bar is set pretty low, though, yeah. compared to the first one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, it Saturday was super crowded, and it was... I mean, there was lines for everything, but it wasn't, it didn't seem to me like chaos. It was just lots of waiting. Yeah, I think the problem a lot of that, that I was reading about was with the celebra the media celebrities. Um, one story I, I read was about this kid who wanted to meet uh, uh, Norman Reedus. And, you know, they, about, he's like, you know, 20 people back and they cut the line and, you know, he sat there for three hours waiting. I, I know there was I think there was a storm out east that delayed a lot of people mm -hmm. getting in and then I I read online that Norman Reedus and Jeffrey Dean Gaines. Morgan had to leave early right. after getting in late so they had a lot less people than even had prepaid for their signatures well, get yeah, in that but was the thing the kid was going to get it because the kid mowed lawns and everything to get this money to meet him and then that happened and so um, actually I think Norman Reedus' agent has reached out through the group that was reporting about it uh, and is flying the mother and the kid out to get to meet both Reedus and Dean Oh, sweet. Wow. So, that, that's so, that, that, nice. so that's nice but I was going to yeah. say Norman Reedus is pretty fan yeah. friendly He's, oh, yeah. he knows where his money comes from yes. 
But uh, yeah, there were a, there was a lot of cancellations. Uh, uh, Snyder was supposed to be with Capullo, and and when I was waiting in line for Snyder's autograph, people were reading Capullo's Twitter feed as he uh, went from small airport to small airport, getting closer and closer <laughs> to Texas. He's like, I'm in Philadelphia now. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, and Snyder and Capullo were supposed to do some panels together that kept getting canceled or moved back. So, it a, a lot of the delays were act of God, as it were, with the weather. And so, it sounds like overall, though, you uh, had a pretty good experience at the con. So. I had I had a good time. I uh, uh, I found some bargains, and I'm I'm mostly went to to meet uh the the few artists and get some signatures but uh, uh i got picked up one grail book a uh, nice copy of detective 359 that i've been wanting for a while and uh, which is uh we don't know if it's true or not yet do we because uh, it was announced on april 1st if, if it, was, it was announced before april was it 1st. announced yeah it was okay. like three or four days so before. it wasn't yeah. april fools no it wasn't so april. there are in talks Whedon with. is in talks to actually do a, a bad girl movie. So yeah. that book was already hot, and if that's Which the case, sparked debate it's, it's going to be net, so. even hotter. So I had I had forgotten about that, and I that was one of the books that I looked for when I go to cons, uh, and uh, the first uh, booth that I went to that had one. Uh, the guy said, oh yeah, that's been super hot since they announced that movie. I thought, oh boy, if I'm ever going to get it, now's the time. So you, you were able to get it and he actually cut you a little bit of slack and so you got a pretty good deal I, on it. So. I feel I got a real good deal. And that's and a book you've been looking for for a while, I know. So. Yep. Excellent. Now I have to find a new one to search for. Yep. That's always the case. I'm sure you won't have any problem with that though. <laughs> so any, any other questions about the con? There were any final <laughs> thoughts? I I enjoyed it. I uh, I in in like I said the 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 first one that I went to I was I was kind of soured on this the new company that does the Dallas Fan Same here. Days Expo and and, and, and uh, I. I don't feel that way anymore. I talked to some of the vendors, and I know uh, when you've set up there the the first year that it was hard to get your stuff unloaded. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, vendors I talked to said that wasn't it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. It um, was it was fairly easy. Actually, they, some of the vendors got booted on their cars for parking in a lot they were told to park in. Um, they got all the little the boots on their cars. So yeah, but I heard that. But yeah, I, a lot of the vendors I haven't got a chance to speak to speak with yet. So. Oh, it's good to hear a little bit of positive yeah. coming out of it because uh, as of late, I mean, all the larger cons have just been getting just really bad ratings, reviews, uh, and then shady dealings going on in the large cons. So that's good to hear. There were definitely lots of people there. So yeah, some of the the name brand cons have specific names we won't mention have been seeing decreased attendance but this one going strong and well, what they want good to do, fan base what they're wanting to do with this one is make it you know one of the big three you know you got San Diego in July you've got New York and they want to make the this fan Expo Dallas the, the third biggest con and so that you know and I actually know they've had studios they're making announcements and stuff too which okay. has been a first. So. Sort of a Midwest large yeah. continent, so kind of competing maybe with Chicago. Well, you said that Snyder and Capullo were supposed to make some big announcement yeah. and they didn't do it. Well, uh, uh, it's a, it, there was a Dark Knight Metal series they're doing together. Oh, so. okay. It ties in with but they had to, metal, it so. got delayed when yeah. Capullo couldn't get there and so. And then uh, Jim Lee was supposed to be there today. I imagine his line was insane and I, I saw the line for Stan Lee and uh, you couldn't see the end of it so 
Which I'm still surprised he pulls that, that, that big of a line, considering he's always down in Texas. <laughs> so and they said he's uh, upped his price to like 150, 100. 150, I think I saw. Yeah. I know signatures for Mark Hamill were 195. Whew, man. Because uh, you said you, you had that Batmobile that's signed by uh, Adam, Adam West and Burt Ward. And you wanted him to sign it. but Well, no, I, I had, uh, what I was going to get Mark Hamill to sign was, I've got uh, the first season of Batman Animated signed by oh. Kevin Conroy, and I was going to get him to sign it since he's the Joker, but... I didn't want it that bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, to get your picture taken with him was 195 bucks. And to get an autograph it was 195 bucks. So to get basically a picture and signature, you're looking 500 bucks. Well, and he said that Charisma Carpenter, even if you wanted a selfie, it was still 40 bucks. So. And uh, now I did meet someone in line. I guess it wasn't 195 a picture for Mark Hamill. It was 195 to get him to sign. Anything. What what you brought to him, and the guy's like, "Well, if you've got something you want signed, give it to me, and I'll, you know, I I had helped him out, covered the line for him while he went to the restroom or something, and and uh, so if I'd known ahead of time that that was going to happen, I could have got it signed. Yeah. Well, and his price for a cel uh, for a celebration in a few weeks is only 150 huh. for for a signature, so. Go to Orlando. So that's free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't cost anything to go to Orlando. Yeah. Well, there's uh, one artist that uh, usually uh, um, attends the uh, Texas cons, and he passed away, and I just wanted to pay homage to Bernie Wrightson. Going to miss you. So. Yeah. But that's, uh, I guess, is that all we have for the Dallas con? Good times Unless had by all, huh? And it was Questions. the same weekend as WonderCon, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. there was a lot of announcements out of there. Right, which we'll cover in the next show. Oh, we will? Why not cover it now? Talking about cons. I, I don't know if I... I well, haven't well, followed up on WonderCon yet. Myself. Because it's still happening. We can still have kind of make, take this uh, next week to get it ready. Well, so. I'm going to talk about it now. Well, go, ahead. go ahead. We, we, I, was what, very, what I was very excited because one of the announcements was that they're going to do DC guess. is going to do a line of cover girl statues based on designs by Joel Jones. Oh, okay. So nice. I will be selling a lot of comics to help pay for that <laughs> one because I saw the Harley Quinn statue and it is gorgeous. Are they gonna do a Catwoman statue? I don't know. They only announced three, I think, and it was Harley, Batgirl, and Wonder Woman. No, was it Wonder Woman? I don't think it was Wonder Woman. I think it was Mara. But you would think the three big ones would be, yeah. you know, right? Batgirl, Harley, and Wonder Woman. But okay. the the Harley statue was gorgeous, and the designs of her Batgirl statue are really neat because she's kind of like up on one hand, kicking. It's pretty neat. So I just thought of a uh, a, a sneak peek announcement. Um, I was at the booth for Unknown Comics out of Amarillo, mm -hmm. and they've been getting a lot of uh, exclusive covers lately, and I stopped to talk to them, and they were showing me some of the preliminary art for their upcoming exclusives. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's three exclusives from now, but it was a, a Mary Jane picture with it done up as Wolverine, and it looked pretty impressive. Cool. I I think it was Art Germ, maybe. Mm -hmm. like Stanley Art Germ. Lau. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that may be because they're getting ready to do those Marvels doing all those variants, the Mary Jane variants. So maybe. Yeah. Uh, part <laughs> of that. So yeah. Because Allward's doing the one for Avengers, and it's Mary Jane as the Vision from Avengers 57. Nice. I like it's the... pretty cool looking. doing one with Mary Jane as the Punisher. I like that one. And then the... Uh, I like the She-Hulk covers where she breaks the fourth wall, talks to the mm -hmm. camera, the, mm -hmm. and threatens to break your comics. And they've got one of Mary Jane as 
the Hulk threatening to come tear up your comics. Awesome. I'll have to add that to my. Does she say tiger? She should. <laughs> tiger of all. Of them. It's in the latest uh, thing. What it? What she says? I don't think she says tiger, but. Well, that's a nice segue. Yeah, that is a pretty good segue because we're going to talk, uh, we're going to do another previews. We missed last month, so I wish we hadn't, but uh, we're just going to go through the previews and discuss what's uh, coming out and what we uh, think is interesting uh, or we think we're going to read. And so maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll find something that you didn't think about. And uh, let's just kick it off. Um, Kenny, what, uh, what have you found interesting so far in this uh Months previews, and this is for uh, p previews coming out in um, June. June, yep. It's uh, catalog number three forty three. Well, the one thing that I noticed was I'm a big fan of the crime books, and Titan has been doing the series uh, Hard Case Criminals mm -hmm. or Hard Case Crime, and they've got a new book coming out called Normandy Gold, and she's like a private eye, and I thought that looked pretty good. Yeah, I saw that as well. I marked myself down for that. That does look pretty good. And also, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. So now on that one, I think it's it's going because I know that they've done a hardcover of that DC did, uh, did the first two. I think. I guess they're going back and taking it from the beginning forward. It, or it looks like it's yeah. an adaptation of the yeah. novels. Yeah, and those are from so. Titan, right? Yeah. Yeah. And on the page and previews where they talk about that, they. Mentioned that the next movie has been scheduled. Really, I didn't see that. In, in the it red, is. in the middle. Oh. Was, yeah, sequel to the critically acclaimed 2011 movie adaptation starring Rooney Mara. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Or Mara, however you say her name. Now, what about you? Have you seen anything in the catalog that has spiked your interest so far? Uh. I was looking at the Marvel catalog, sorry. Uh, some of the Mary Jane covers are good. No, she does not say Tiger. That's too bad. I know. She just said she's going to rip up your X-Men, which she can on mine, that's fine. I think I'm going to check out The Strange Case of the Disappearing Man. Now, you were big on a book, too, uh, in the Image section. Oh, it was, was it Image? Uh, yeah. I think it was Image, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's either, it's going to be either, it's going to be one of those books that is either really, really bad it's got to be good or it's going to be it's so bad that it's so bad it's called the shirtless bear fighter <laughs> and, and just the description of it just just i uh, just made me laugh uh, after being betrayed by the bears that raised him the legendary shirtless bear fighter wanders the forest he swore he sworn to protect fist fighting bears eating flapjacks and being the angriest man the world has ever known when wild-eyed, super-strong bears attack the citizens of a major city, Shirtless ventures into the human world to do what he does best, punch those bears in the face. But all is not as it seems someone is manipulating Shirtless, and only by confronting the demons of his past can Shirtless hope to save his future. So, Shirtless Bear Fighter, that's, that's going to be the next big hit, I'm sure. Also an image, uh, Black Magic by uh, Rucka, Rucka and is coming back. And, uh, Nicola Scott is coming back. And they're also doing a... They're finally doing a history of Catwoman book. It's called The Many Lies of Catwoman, The Felonious History of a Feline Fatale. Nice. Speaking of doing... I'm looking forward to that. Not, not exactly histories, but a collection. Uh, they're doing a collection of Sabrina, aren't they? Yeah. Well... This is the second time they've, the second they've time solicited, solicited it. it. Hopefully it'll finally come out. And Terry, for you, the Zen one of the Xenoscope covers is uh, yeah. a bubble helmet. Oh, I didn't notice that. I already went through the... Yep, girl in a bubble helmet. I, I got this thing for bubble helmets. So. <laughs> well, there's two of them, I think. Well, the yeah. other one, she's putting it on. Or yeah, she's putting it on there. Or taking it off. Yeah. It looks like maybe taking it off. And we mentioned uh, Art Germ earlier as an artist. He's doing a statue. Um, DC Cover Girls uh, is actually going to do a death statue, which he designed. Um, it looks pretty awesome. It's a Victorian yeah, kind of look. Yeah, it has a yeah. Victorian look to it. Yep. I'll have to kind of order that one. 
trying to find it here. There's this one little company that's doing some books that are doing. They're going back to newsprint and uh, some of their titles sound pretty good, but they're you know the books are only like a dollar, dollar fifty a piece. I can't find where that was at. Do you remember which uh, I don't. section that was in? Uh -huh. It was just sort of a like I said, a real small company. I know that Red Five Comics is doing a Kaiser Soze yeah. series. Yep. I, I hope it it's good. I ordered it. I, I hope it's good. I think it picks up after the movie, I think, doesn't it? I or think it's it um I think it's before. It before. It's kind of a image. though though he Okay, spoiler alert. He made him up on the spot, so how could it be before? I don't know. We'll have to read it and find out. There's going to be another... Uh, Sorry, i got to get this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please stand by. We're uh, some technical I was not aware. <laughs> and we're back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Image has got a lot of new ones uh, in this one also, but Crosswinds looks pretty good. Written by Gail Simone. It's a creator owned with uh, art by Kat Skaggs. And it's about a Chicago hitman and a Seattle housewife that this event happens and they kind of their lives kind of merge and they trade places. So I, th I thought that was going to be interesting. It could as be well. interesting, yeah. The company I was talking about, I just found it in here. It's um, Alterna Alterna Comics, and they have actually four titles that are coming out. It looks like that uh, every one of them are a dollar fifty, except for one. One they're actually going to do a dollar. They're all on newsprint. Um, looks like uh, at least two are in black and white and two are in full color but the the titles are Mother Russia, Scrimshaw, The Chair and Trespassers and uh, they all sound fairly interesting so you might want to check them out hmm and also they're doing another um, Lady Mechanica coloring book so if you like to color and you want beautiful art to color you can get the uh, second volume of Lady Mechanica well, I got the first one just because it's you know, Joe Benitez drawing Lady Mechanica. What can go wrong? Did you color yours yet? No. No. I, I usually you might want to get two. You know, one to color, one not to color. There's also a a book called the Tarantula hardcover. Um, yeah, I saw that. And from Ad House Books, and I was going to order it, but fifteen bucks to. The, and all you see is the cover. I just couldn't pull the trigger. But did it sound interesting, I guess? Yeah. It's like a pulp hero type mm -hmm. story that they... You were talking about um, being a crime fan. Action Lab has a new series, Adventures in Crime, about a Golden Age comics creator, Jack Levi. Yeah, I signed yeah. up for that one. Yeah, that looks to be pretty interesting. I, I don't think you signed up for it. Uh, you just kind of... No, I didn't. You can read mine. I'll check yours out. You have to wear you have to wear acid proof gloves now, though. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so. wearing gloves now. Garth I, Ennis I, is back uh, with a new series. Who? Who? Garth Ennis. Oh, uh, Jimmy's with, uh, Bastards, right? Jimmy's Bastards. Yep. Yeah. I'm interested on the, uh, on the uh, opposite page from that is the uh, AfterShock's Baby Teeth. It's about this uh, girl that gets pregnant, and it's sort of an omen type thing. Or apparently, her kid is going to be the next. Uh, Antichrist. Uh, and that also be Rosemary's Baby too. Yeah, kind of a Rosemary's Baby type of uh, story going on, and I like both of the covers on it as well. Uh, not anybody that I necessarily recognize, but uh, I like it. So yeah, that Sasha Devereaux is back in a new book. Who was Sasha Devereaux? Debutante Desperado. I don't oh. know. I just saw it. <laughs> in the last catalog uh, from AfterShock, Pestilence Number One came out and this one's got the second version it's uh what if the black plague was actually a uh, zombie outbreak <laughs> i'm gonna give that one a well, give it a chance it's got one an artist that i like uh, doing the cover on a tim bradstreet so that may yeah uh, I, I don't know if i ordered number one or not it, it sounds like something right up my alley though i i think you did because when i signed up for it if I got a pen, I better mark myself down for number two then. <laughs> um, Antarctic has is collecting the Airship Enterprise, uh, steampunk adventures of the Starship, well, the steampunk ship uh, Enterprise, Star Trek, yeah. From Brian Denham. This beautiful canvas looks pretty cool. 
Yeah, it does look pretty cool. I was actually going to ask you what you thought about that. I didn't. I haven't put myself down for it, but I was tempted to. But you know, usually me and Kenny both like crime noir type stuff, and uh, I didn't see. It, it's not exactly crime noir, but she's it, an assassin. It sounded kind of, you know, sort of. Like Black that. Mask. I mean, from what I've the stuff that I've read from him has been pretty good. Yeah, it's just sporadic coming out. So and the art's not bad either. And I think a lot of times the they come out with a book and they're not ready for the success of the book, and so I think that interferes with them getting it out on time. Then Boom's doing a clueless graphic novel, but again, well, fifteen me, bucks. Yeah, Boom's doing a Colin Bunn's going back to his horror roots and doing the book uh, The Unsound. It's about a lady who is a nurse that works in a psychiatric hospital. Um, going back to Image, uh, I'm interested in this uh, number one coming out uh, morning September morning volume one with the Sylvester cover. Well, it's based on the uh, Goth Metal Group. Uh, September morning. Uh, the cover itself is, is just it's it's amazing. It's about them, yeah. So, I, I can't say I'm familiar with the goth metal. I just, I saw the cover and I was like, wow, this, I'll have to check this out. We skipped the previews, didn't we? We yeah, did last yeah, time. Yeah, okay. Because I was going to say, there's a second volume of Die Kitty Die by Dan Parent. Yeah. And uh, they're doing the Golden Age Hero Phantoma. She's getting her own series. And if you've never read Phantoma, you should check it out. I mean, I'm sure you can download Golden Age issues. It's pretty weird, trippy superhero. I'm interested in the IDW Shed number one. I, I just got just the most bizarre description. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of it by the description, but it sounds interesting. Uh, just quickly, uh, Tim Kaine sheds his elaborately tattooed skin, becoming the first new line of hominids just destined to flourish in an increasingly radioactive Earth. With his nervous system exposed, Tim gains extrasensory abilities but loses his freedom. Detained, tortured, and stripped of his human rights, Tim's only desire is to escape his captors and see his wife and daughter again. Hmm. So he's attacked by a fascist regime. Regime? I don't yeah. know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's uh, it's also got. Uh, uh, some people like uh, Ben Templesmith, so he's got an alternate subcover for that. Um, Caliber Comics was big in the 80s. Well, 80s, 90s. Uh, one of their books, I don't know if you did read it, James, Legend Lore. It was kind of a and d they're, they're collecting it in the volume one of the trade paperback. And it's pretty cheap, too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like you know, 16 bucks for 12 issues. So that I believe that spun out of uh, one of my favorite... Yeah sword and sorcery books ever the realm and uh so it spun out of it or not it wasn't before it, it was the realm was first okay. and then legend lore was telling the backstory of all the kingdoms and all the players and they're coming out with a clue comic book so if you're had interest in the Clue game, maybe you'll want to follow up with the uh, book Clue, uh, where Mr. Body, the, actually, uh, the character's name is Mr. Body, is found dead, and all the uh, usual um, suspects. suspects or uh, your, your Clue game people. Uh, so, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. I, I'm not sure about it, but it could I be I think it has alternate endings, too, doesn't it? Does it have alternate it probably, endings? Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, dating all the classic characters featuring three alternative endings to help you get a clue we've hidden multiple endings to this first issue across the regular and subscription variants that will help you solve the case so so you have to buy more than one. <laughs> you might have to buy more one just to solve the uh, solve the comic so um, there's one that I know a lot of people are excited about is dynamite is coming back out with mighty mouse I like the Alex Ross cover. It's just the classic, you know, Mighty Mouse in action. Yeah, the Alex Ross cover is yeah. nice for, for a Mighty Mouse cover. Although yeah. I think it might be interesting to get that Mighty Mouse uh, blank cover and uh, get your own Mighty yeah. Mouse done yeah. by somebody. 
local superstar Johnny Johnson. Yeah, yeah he, could, he could do a sweet Mighty Mouse. Let's see if Chris or Johnny can do one of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lady Death has a, a new collection out, uh, Lady Death Rules, Volume 1. Uh, friend of my, a friend of mine, uh, and pers- uh, like she was at Collector Con, Ashley Witter is doing the, uh, the cover for the hardcover. So... They're doing a new uh, sort of take on Call. Uh, it's called Call the Eternal. This is from uh, IDW as well. Um, it looks really? IDW got the Call, huh? Yeah, it looks more a little bit more modern. So it's kind of mixing a little bit old with a little bit of new. So for any Call fans, you might find that of interest. And that uh, one covers uh, the painted cover is pretty nice. The painted cover. I don't know who does that, but the, yeah, the painted cover is pretty nice. Actually, just two painted covers. It looks like. But they're they're both pretty decent. Well, this the this guy, I, yeah. I don't know who it is. He's got his own book coming out from IDW. I don't I don't remember the name of it though. I can't think of. If it. it's the last, if it's the last one. Uh, brought, uh, Julio de Pastores. Yeah. Oh, Julio. Julio yeah. Pastores. Magnus so. is going to be coming back out uh, from Dynamite. Only this time, Magnus is a woman. Then we get Kiss and Vampirella, and there's Cross a cover by doing? Roberto Castro, and it ha- kind of has a the whole Warren feel to that cover. I really like it. I like how this this cover here it actually it kind of looks like a star. Yeah, from the it points does. of it, and, and it kind of does a kind of an homage to the old Kiss covers where it was just their face. Yeah. And Guar, there's a Guar bar. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did see that. Uh, all you metal fans, or uh, if you do, is Guar considered metal? I don't know what you consider Guar. <laughs> guar is Guar. Guar is Guar. So if you're a Guar and you're a fan, and you're also a comic book fan, you that I'm sure is a must to pick up some Guar. Will they throw? Sl- will there be like a packet of slime or something <laughs> in the ba- book? Packet of blood. <laughs> so you open it up and it just <laughs> hits you in the face with some slime. Well, and for the Jim Butcher fans, there's a new Dresden comic book coming out with the original story. Right. And uh, two books that we mentioned from the last time we did this was uh, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys as the noir type, Mm -hmm. and it was pretty good. And uh, The Spirit by Frank Avia has been awesome. That's what I've heard. Really? Yeah. Wow. I liked it. I wouldn't have thought that, to be honest. Uh, I'll have to check it out then. I'm interested. I mean, it's not Will Eisner, but I think he picked. I think he has that feel. In DC, they're bring they're tying in a lot of the DC characters with uh, Warner Brothers characters. Mm-hmm. And being a Batman fan, I'm interested in Batman slash Elmer Fudd special number one, where Elmer Fudd goes after he's hunting Batman. And there's several other ones, like I think Tasmanian Devil and Wonder Woman go at it in one of the issues. And of course, Yosemite Sam and Jonah Hex. Yosemite yes. Sam and Jonah Hex. Yes, that's I. I, I think they missed their chance on the Le- on the Legion of Superheroes when I think they should have had them crossing over with uh, Duck Dodgers. Yeah, true. <laughs> Though they do have Marvin the Martian and Martian Manhunter. That one looks really good. The covers really, the really one nice. One looks on that. cool. Also, it's the Lobo. Uh, Wiley Coyote. Wiley Coyote. That, that, that by Kelly Jones. And and the, the I like the picture of the uh, Lobo and Wiley Coyote. They're li- they're both. They've got a picture of Roadrunner on there, and they're going after Roadrunner. Mm-hmm. The only the only downfall of these is they're specials, and they're going to be a little bit more. They're uh, four ninety nine. Oh, did you see that Lobo Roadrunner was the Kelly Jones? Yeah, he just, said, just that. said that. Oh, did you just say, say that? <laughs> I, that's so how that much Terry proves. pays attention to Dow. <laughs> <laughs> the whole weekend that he doesn't listen to me. Yeah, I, I, so. yeah, but I had a, you know again yeah, several no, people no talking. Excuse, sir. All right, fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Lion Ford is putting out some new books. Um, a book called Jazz Maynard. It's a kind of a crime book. Uh, looks pretty good. His sister gets. Uh, he discovers he has a long lost sister in the grip of New York sex traffickers. He goes to rescue her. Sounds interesting. What, what book was this? And who? What uh, company? Jazz Maynard. That was the. That's the. That's the name of the the, the book. The book. Uh, that's by Lion Forge. Lion Again, Forge. As I just said, he doesn't listen to me. No, I. I, I <laughs> 
No, I, I was trying to get it again because I, I didn't hear it. I heard you, but I didn't get it down because uh, I wanted to look at it again and it sounded interesting. And the triple X variant cover of this month's Sex Criminals is by Joe Quinones of Howard the Duck. It says, if only there was some way to turn that title into something dirty. Triple X, huh? Wow. And there's a new Rothic book coming out called Divinica. Mm -hmm. I think and I, I can't recommend them for the for the writing. But the but arts. <laughs> the art's pretty and the covers are just gorgeous. And uh, her story ideas are neat, mm -hmm. like the plots and everything, but she'll get there eventually as, as a writer, I think. Where, where is she falling? You said the plots and ideas are interesting, just the... Uh, the, the execution, execution of the of stories. Yeah. Just, for one, I'm, I mean, I might be being unfair, because I don't like poetry and comics. I mean, just get to the point. Tell me what I'm supposed to be reading. I don't. I don't do metaphors. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, to me, it's 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 the whole terror thing. Really good good art, not very good story. So, but I just. Yeah. And at that note, I just <laughs> it wasn't a mic drop, guys. <laughs> Well, we're still looking. Yeah, we're, you know, we're kind of... I always like these Blood Bowl, the covers, but the stories I haven't been able to get into. For you Evil Dead 2 fans, there's an adult coloring book and activity book coming out. I like that someone, is it DC, is doing a kid's coloring book? I saw <laughs> that, yes. I'm not sure about this Winnebago graveyard. Uh, Steve Niles is doing the story. Uh, it's being put out by Image. Family is basically traveling on vacation and gets stranded in a small town. And there's sinister secrets. Isn't that like e every horror, every, horror yeah, movie every, every, starts that way? So that's right? why I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, but if you're a fan of Steve Niles' mm -hmm. writing, and he, he has his hits and misses, but he probably has more hits than he does misses with his. Um, for first. fans of the Jack Campbell, the writer Jack Campbell, he's got a new uh, comic series. It's going to be set kind of in that in his Lost Fleet. Uh, universe. Uh, it's a uh, coming out from Titan Comics. The new series, the new uh, the second ish, second series of Britannica. Yeah, that starts. Uh, yeah, which I need to get caught up on. I'm a little behind on it. So I didn't sign up for, it, but I think Kenny did. Uh, the Lou Cameron's Unsleeping Dead. Uh, um, from IDW, the Chilling Archives sounds pretty interesting. They kind of they think Luke Cameron is sort of a combination of Jim Steranko meets Graham Ingalls. Um, and it does look pretty interesting. So, Well, I just like all those Craig Yo books. He just does an excellent job. They do they do, do an excellent job. Uh, it's, it's a nice paper, but yet it keeps the um, consistency of of the original piece, I believe. Yeah. Whereas, like, I've been picking up these DC uh, Batman omnibuses and I think uh, they're just carrying it over, and they just recolored them. And it's like somebody did it in Microsoft Paint and just took a uh, took the uh, paintbrush and just blobbed in some color. So, and it's just completely opposite with what these guys do. They just do such a great job. Tokyo Pop is back. Uh, they've been back for a little bit, but they've just been doing like Cinna stuff. Uh, but they've actually got a new uh, volume one manga called uh, Demon Demonium. It's going to be back coming out. So. They got a really, um, if you have a previews on page 544, just really, really gorgeous Harley Quinn statue, but it's 250 bucks. <laughs> well, that's not the one you were talking about earlier, is it? No. What's up? Well, we've been joined by our... What, one going guest? Yeah, it's uh, Jess Carrington is here. Say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> She's into uh, Pokemon cards now. 
I don't. She doesn't play it. She just likes collecting the cards because she likes drawing them. She's actually pretty good at it. A lot of a lot of people are good, kids are doing that now. Just just buying them for the art mm -hmm. on them. Cool. But she's got the Pokemon guide and all that stuff too now. So we were talking about uh, something James wanted to mention, Valerian. Yeah, with the movie coming out, they're re-releasing the three yep. hardcover collections. Now, who was that releasing it? Um, it's Humanoids, isn't it? I think it? so. Humanoids? Yeah, I think so. I think they use a different name in there, right. though. And then also another, uh, uh, with the TV show coming out, the... Uh, From Neil Gaiman, oh, American Gods. Gods. Yeah, we're continuing the fourth and fifth issue there. So that's coming out. Layouts by P. Craig Russell and painted by which Hampton? Scott Hampton? Scott, I think. But I, I was kind of worried how that would look. But after reading the first issue and seeing it, I was like, yeah, this, this works. Oh, well. You can kind of see, you can really see Russell in the layouts of the pages. Yes. And for those of you who have to get all of J. Scott Campbell's covers, he's doing a variant cover for Ash versus the Evil Dead this month. Yes. Uh, the Valerian is Cinnabook. Putting that out. Cinnabun. Cinnabook. Not bun. The Overstreet Price Guide is coming out with uh, Steranko doing a cover. I wouldn't say it's the best Steranko. I, it, I hope it's just a preliminary cover because that looks horrible. But. Uh, if you're a Stranko fan, you might want the uh, Overstreet comic book price the guy. Rom? No, he's doing no, he's the doing Batman. Batman. That's fan of graphics. Um, Stone. I think it's Jimstone. Interesting book. Uh, Z2 Comics this has a trade paperback coming out called Murder Ballads. Um... And it's it's a meditation on music, race, obsession, and how far someone will go to see their vision become real. But it's got a an original uh, soundtrack by the uh, the Black Keys. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, that. Uh, oh, it's twenty four ninety five. It's twenty four ninety five. So. I, I was thinking about getting that one, but it, like you said, it's twenty four ninety five. But heck, if you go to get a new CD, you're gonna pay at least ten bucks. So with this, you get art and a story, and so. And that's the justification of the tickler. Well, I mean, just 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 the thought. Terry, for everybody else, CDs have been about fifteen dollars for several years now. Oh, they're fifteen dollars now. Well, back in the day when <laughs> ju when they first came out, they were they were like twenty five to thirty. It seemed like, if I remember right, I didn't buy a lot of them when they first came out. I had to wait till they started going down in price. If you're a big Count of Monte Cristo fan, I'm a big Count of Monte Cristo fan myself. Uh, they're coming out with a, in the manga section, a Count of Monte Cristo uh, manga adaption. Manga adaption. So I don't know. It's black and white. It's going to have a hardcover and soft cover edition. And it's going to be manga. And, and it's going to be manga. So did you did you mention the divided states of hysteria by Howard Chaykin? I did not. Where he claims it's going to get him arrested. Yeah. Can we only hope? <laughs> I had to hand James the uh, brutal nature. That was the name of the book that I was talking about. That guy did. Okay. From that from that one cover, I had to had, had, uh, hand James the uh, order the order book because he keeps finding we keep mentioning stuff he needs to order. But it's uh, Ariel Olivetti. Oh, yes. That that's who I was thinking of. So I don't think that cover was by him, but it kind of has his look. <laughs> Did you order any Jungle Comics this uh, time around, Kenny? No. I didn't, that book is... The cheesecake art doesn't make up for it. It doesn't? It's awful. They're really getting cheesecake. Yeah, it looks like uh, in this issue, there's a lot of wild covers. Uh, that's not cheesecake -y. That's just No, it's board. just... <laughs> probably. There comes a line that, yes... <coughs> I'm kind of interested. I don't pick up a lot of value, but I'm kind of interested in this new secret weapons. 
that looks pretty interesting. Valiant. The government has dispatched Amanda McKee to te a technopath, codenamed Livewire, to investigate the ruins of a secret facility formerly run by Toyo Harda, <coughs> the most powerful telepath on Earth, and her former mentor. Gund, the uh, bear company, they're from the night, eight, well, they've been around for a long time, have got their line of uh, DC Comics Batman Bedtime Pal and Wonder Woman <coughs> Limited Edition plush animals with Super Superman Bear and Batman Bear and... Oh, were you things. talking about those really awful looking things? <laughs> no, these are gun. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, no, awful those, you were what, of. what were those? There were some other dolls that are coming out that have. The one that had Wonder Woman and uh, a couple of others that had sort of bear like features. They just looked awful. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend those. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a, the Supergirl, the Silver Age trade. Did you mention that? I did not. Yeah, no. reprints action 252 to 284. Nice. I might get that because I know I can't afford an action 252, that's for sure. I'm not sure you can. I just have to mortgage my house. Oh! Bug. Bug, The Adventures Forager, of yeah. Forager, uh, yeah. by uh, Mike Allred. I haven't been real blown away by any of these young animal books, but I will be picking that one up for sure. In uh, Valiant, they're doing a second Britannia series. The first one was pretty good. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um... And I'm waiting, waiting for a second Savage. That was actually pretty good, too. So what do you think of this uh, Batman Shadow number 3 cover there with the Joker? I like that cover. That's it's a really nice cover. It's a different-looking Joker, though. Yes, it's... And a couple things. Um, for you uh, the Shoujo statue fans and Miss Marvel fans of that... They're doing a the Camilla Khan uh, Miss Marvel statue. Yeah, in August. They didn't show Joe the up that they one as really much didn't as, know. as uh -uh. they usually do, which is I guess good considering she's only sixteen. And uh, one of our other guests we had uh, a couple shows back, Alan, um, the amazing Alan, I think Alan, I think what he was called. Um, is a big fan of the Scotty Young stuff, and they've got a couple of statues in here. One's a Groot and Rocket, and the other's a Magneto done in the Scotty Young style. So. On the Marvel front, the X Men Gold is bringing back the Sentinels. If you if you like the Sentinels as bad guys for the X Men. Class symbols are classic. Oh, and, and about ten years ago, Dark Horse did um, four volumes of horror mm -hmm. hardcovers, and they're collecting them all into one book called the Dark Horse Book of Horror, and it's got big time people on it, like Damon, Magnola, Gianni, Jill Thompson, Sean Phillips, P. Craig Russell. So it's definitely worth checking out. Those and it's were a good price too. And it it's was like, yeah, it's only twenty bucks, yeah. and it's like three hundred and sixty-eight pages. And uh, that's actually where uh, Beasts of Burden first mm -hmm. appeared. So it's one worth checking out. So anything uh, coming out in the Marvel catalog that has anybody's interest? No. They're starting a new Darth Vader series. Mary Jane covers are going to be coming out. Mary Jane covers will be coming out. Yeah. So just sort of variants with Mary Jane all over the place, sort of like yeah. sort of like Venom. I know yeah. there's a few companies that are selling packs of all the Mary Jane. So you can go online and just get like, every single cover. I think that unknown has it for yes. like fifty eight bucks or yep. something. Yeah, they've got one of the better discounts. Yep. There's a and they're nice guys too. There's a. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129 homage of uh, that's her. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That, yeah, that's, that's the one that he I, was talking about. I put about. myself down for that, but I don't. I don't expect I'll probably get it. That's the one I would want, though. The Doctor Strange one is real good too. Yeah, though. yeah. So, so yeah, if you're a fan, it actually kind of reminds me of the the Gwyn 
Gwen Stacy wins. It's like they just topped the took the head off. And Doctor Gwen. I just, yeah. I'm just uh, really happy that Marvel is going back to their classic Roots. heroes. Well, and they, classic they said they takes. Gonna They're going to keep the 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 diversity. Or no, girl. what do they call them? The legacy characters. Yeah. So. Well, they originally said they were going to do it after Secret Empire, but with all the Retailer Summit uh, stuff that happened um, yeah. with them, they're going to do it during Secret uh, Empire. And, they're going to uh, be lucky if they can get any artists after the comment he made. Yeah. So. Axel Alonso. Was it Axel Alonso uh, or the other guy? It was either him or Gabriel. David Gabriel. Yeah, David Gabriel said that artists don't matter on comics. No. And I'm like, well, don't tell they that don't to Mike. Ma- they don't matter now because <laughs> you don't have any left. Uh-huh. I'm like, don't tell that to my collection full of anything by Joel Jones mm-hmm. or uh, Mar- Mike Allred or well, Sean Phillips. And <laughs> Marvel had that experience in back in the '90s yeah. when all their artists left to go to Image, and we saw. Well, and then well he that turned around out. and said that they all regretted it. I and I'm like, think, I, I, I don't, don't think those. It I don't all. think those four <laughs> millionaires regret moving to yeah. me. <laughs> I mean, look at McFarlane. He's going to be writing, directing his the, the Spawn reboot yeah. into more horror. And, um, I don't think he's regretting anything. So I mean, yeah, some of these second tier people that went to Image that didn't have the runaway success that they wanted, but yeah. it, it was. It's not like they didn't get hired back by Marvel or DC yeah, right, anyway. Right, right. So. And one book we missed last month is Rob Liefeld's return to, of Youngblood. Yes. yes. And we will so that miss will it be, this month again. <laughs> that will be A, late, and B, never finished. Yes. He'll, but he'll, he'll he release. has learned how to draw feet. Yes. Um... Back at Dynamite, the, they're still doing some more Atari stuff. They're coming out with the comic called Sword Quest, which looks pretty interesting. But the book that looks the most interesting to me, um, which I've been thinking about getting, is the Art of Atari Poster Collection. If you uh, bought Atari games back in the day, you would always remember that majority of the time the art didn't have anything to do with the games, but the art was just amazing that you had to buy it. And it's not too bad. It's twenty four ninety nine. And there's just some great, beautiful pieces. It's a 12 by 16. So. It's an oversized hardcover. Yes, oversized hardcover. So yet another book that you can't figure out where to put in your house. <laughs> <laughs> one book that was out last catalog, I think it was, that um, I know I think I was the only one that ordered it through the store, was the DC put out the Book of Horror, uh, Volume 1. It was all the House of Secrets. Yeah, because it was bucks. yeah, it was fifty it was, bucks. I thought about it, but you know, with, like we said last week, with rights and passing away, yeah. And, so, but trying to go back and get a House of Secrets ninety two though. I already have one. Well, yeah. if I didn't have one, I, I probably would have bought it. True. What What shocked me was uh, this Wednesday, uh, Marvel's doing the True Believers mm-hmm. Giant Size X Men number one, and it's only a buck, and I was the only one that ordered one. Yeah. So I was kind of shocked. Like reprint of a twelve hundred dollar book yeah. <laughs> for well, a buck. <laughs> Dynamite's continuing their uh, George R. R. Martin with the uh, Clash of Kings book two with the Song of Fire and Ice. So do you see his that. press release where he said that uh, the newest book would be done before season seven begins? And then you scroll down to the bottom, and it said April, April Fools, Fools, and it had him laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's about right. Well, it was on that note, they actually put a second trailer out for season yeah. seven. So. The Long Walk. Mm-hmm. I still haven't got any to get caught back up on that. I need to get yeah, I know you did. catch number six and watch it. And so. Riverdale's been pretty good. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the comics. Uh, the only the only character they really nailed was Reggie. Uh, you know, I actually kind of like Jughead. He, he's kind of yeah, they don't. I mean, what do we know about Jughead? Not he much. loves to eat. Oh uh, yeah. And they never show him eating. So. But he's always in the diner. It seems like though. Yeah, he does hang out at Pops, yeah. but that's because he's homeless. Oh uh, yeah. Well, he was. The last one I saw, he was. He had just. They were going to move in with. He was going to move in with Archie, I think. Yeah. But that, that was the last one I saw. So. 
and then they got into a fight. Oh, did they have yeah. a lipstick incident again? No. No, it was Jughead. Jug, he, Jughead never told them about his dad being this one of the South Side Serpents. Oh, okay. so. no, it's South Side Serpents. It's all coming. The the <coughs> true evil in the world. The yeah. South Side South Serpents. Side serpents. <laughs> um, I, I'm liking that. I didn't think I would, but um, I'm really enjoying it. So I haven't watched any of it yet. Doesn't surprise me. But Iron Fist, I thought was great. The yes, critic. I watched all of Iron Fist. I, I thought it was a good. The and critics see, tore heard, it up, but people, I thought it was great. I've heard people that have liked it, and I've heard people that thought it was one of their one of their time back. I haven't myself yeah. haven't been able to sit and watch it yet. So I, mean, I thought it was great. It, I, I rank it above Luke Cage. I, the first six episodes of Luke Cage were great. The set, the last seven, uh, not so much. But I liked Iron Fist. I thought he did a really good job. So that's all I think I can. That's all I'm coming across. With. I think we hit quite a bit of points in the uh, upcoming uh, preview. So hopefully somebody will be able to find something in there that they like to order. Unless anybody else can think of anything, I think I probably need to go through it again real fast and, and sign myself up for a couple of things. Maybe once James gets done with it. <laughs> And I'll say that uh, we only had one reply for my giveaway, uh, so I'll do it again. And the code word is, I don't know. So post that in the replies and you can get some free comics. So uh, any cons coming up that we need to let everybody know about? Uh, you've got KC Con in May. <coughs> KC Con in May, Planet Comic Con. Well, yeah, plan to come. Yep, I'll so. be going. You're going now. I am going. Going for both days. Yep. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So, and Alan may be going. Two <laughs> two Warren guys are going to be there, so I need to go. You need to get those signatures on yeah. that book. <laughs> well, I think we've mentioned it before, but Kenny does have an amazing Warren book that has tons and tons of signatures from the Warren guys. It's the it's really my book. It's just in his collection, like a couple of other books. No, like a that's Wolverine not true. One, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. The Wolverine number one. Yeah, we could argue that one, but you're not getting the Warren book. Sorry. Well, um, I think that's about it then. Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in and checking it out. And uh, leave a comment uh, on Kenny's uh, drawing, and uh, we'll get back to you. And uh, hopefully we'll be recording another episode next week. Um, let us know if there's anything you want to talk about or have us talk about, and we'll try to work that in. Really do appreciate it. Terry the French Tickler French signing out. Just Kenny. Captain Dalian. And our guest, James. James, whatever my nickname was, David. Jazzy. Jazzy, Jazzy and Jazzy James, James Davis. Davis. Carrington. And Just Carrington. So, thanks a lot. Take care. Goodbye. See ya.